When a star in our galaxy explodes, it has the potential to outshine the moon. Researchers are working feverishly to prepare the fireworks caused by the supernova. A supernova is the most massive explosion that humans have ever witnessed. Each blast is exceptionally bright, super powerful star explosion. These spectacular events can be so bright that they can outshine entire galaxies for days or even months and can be seen from anywhere in the universe. In this video, we will look at the most destructive explosion in the universe. Welcome back to Explained Earth. Before we begin, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and do give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. Turn on the bell icon to receive notifications about upcoming videos, and with that all said, let's start this video. A supernova is a big star that explodes catastrophically as it approaches the end of its life. It has the ability to produce more energy in a few seconds than our sun does in a whole billion year existence. The catastrophic explosions known as supernovae kill stars after they have completed their lifetimes, leaving mesmerizing gorgeous traces in the skies above us. A supernova should occur as frequently as every 50 years in a galaxy the size of our Milky Way, which has about 200 billion stars. Supernovae that can be seen with the naked eye are incredibly uncommon. One may or may not appear in your lifetime. What we see are expanding clouds in space that were once stars called supernova remnants. There are numerous instances both within and without our galaxy. The Crab Nebula is one of the most well-known supernova remnant that can be seen from the northern hemisphere. It's situated in the direction of Taurus, the bull, the constellation. The Chinese allegedly saw the supernovae in 1054 CE. It was noted that the object, which was identified as a guest star, remained visible throughout the day for three weeks before disappearing completely three months later. The Crab Nebula gained notoriety when Jocelyn Bell Burnell, a PhD student at Cambridge University in England, made the first known pulsar discovery. The Crab Pulsar is a neutron star that was left over from the explosion that created the Crab Nebula, as is common knowledge. The rotation of pulsars causes them to generate radio wave beams, acting as cosmic lighthouses. Unfortunately, we are directly in the path of the Crab Pulsar's beams. What exactly is a supernova and what gives rise to it? Astronomers are slowly peeling back the layers of mystery surrounding these exploding stars. We learn something new from each supernova and their utter unpredictability is intriguing. Astronomers have learned a lot about supernovae during the past 50 years. According to statistics, our Milky Way galaxy is due for a magnificent explosion. We can only hope that it happens someday, but ideally not too soon. Unlike novas, which are momentary flare-ups and dwarf stars in binary systems, supernovas are more potent and ultimate explosions. In the nova scenario, the dwarf star collects elements from its partner star. Due to additional material, the dwarf star occasionally abruptly flares up to many times in typical brightness. It takes several months for it to regain its previous brightness before the next flare-up gradually. The outer layers of a star are violently expelled into space during a supernova, which is considerably larger and intrinsically brighter explosion, thus the word super. A supernova can cause a star to lose all of its brilliance and possibly completely disappear, leaving behind an expanding supernova remnant. The term stellar novae, or new stars, first used in 1572 by the famed Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe, was once used to describe novae and supernovae. This is due to the possibility of both novae and supernovae producing new stars in our sky when none previously existed. Supernovae flare up quickly and unexpectedly before slowly fading away over the course of weeks or months. Although supernovae can come from many different places, all of them involve the explosion of a star. According to a classification scheme created by Swiss astronomer Fritz Zwicky and German-American astronomer Rudolf Minkowski, supernovae are currently split into Type 1 and Type 2 categories. As a result, the classification system is known as the Minkowski-Zwicky system. The classification is based on the spectrum or division of colors of the supernovae's light. While it's still present in Type 2 supernovae, hydrogen is absent from the spectra of Type 1 supernovae. Type 1 is further classified into a 1A, 1B, and 1C subtypes based on their spectra. While explosions in categories 1, 1, 1B, and 1C are all grouped together, Type 1A is a whole different species. The distinction between categories that the explosion's genesis specifies is maybe of more significance. Type 2 supernova to explode as a Type 2 supernova, a star must have mass several times that of our Sun. Estimates range from 8 to 15 solar masses. Similar to the Sun, it will eventually run out of fuel as its core, first hydrogen and then helium. However, there will be enough mass and pressure to fuse carbon. 
The star then grows layers of material that resemble an onion, with lighter elements expanding outwards and heavier elements progressively accumulating at the center. The mass beyond which the star's core begins to disintegrate is known as the Chandrasekha limit. Because of this, these Type II supernovae are also known as core collapse supernovae. The implosion eventually returns to the star's core and sends stellar debris into space, creating a supernova. What's left is a neutron star, a city-sized, very dense object that contains the mass of the sun. The light curves, which display how the light intensity changes over time, are the foundation for classifying the subcategories of Type II supernovae. The brightness of Type II L supernovae progressively decreases after the explosion, whereas the light of Type II P supernovae is constant for a considerable period of time before fading. The spectra of both types shows the signature of hydrogen. According to astronomers, stars with masses far greater than the Sun may not undergo supernova explosions. Rather, they collapse into black holes. Guys, please subscribe to the channel if you want to, and do give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. Turn on the bell icon to receive notifications about upcoming videos that we post related to the Earth and the Universe. Do feel free to share if you find this video helpful so far. Type 1 Supernovae Because they don't have a signature of hydrogen in their light spectra, Type 1 Supernovae are believed to originate from white dwarf stars in a nearby binary system. As the gas from the companion star accumulates on the white dwarf, it becomes more and more squeezed. Eventually, the white dwarf's nuclear reaction spirals out of control, resulting in a destructive supernova explosion. Astronomers use the type of 1A supernovae as standard candles to gauge cosmic distances because it's thought that all of them burn equally brightly at their apex. Although they have mostly lost their outer hydrogen layer, type 1B and 1C supernovae also experience core collapse similar to type 2 supernovae. Astronomers discovered the dim, elusive companion star of type 1B supernova in 2014. The search took two decades because the companion star was far fainter than the explosion. Supernovae as useful tools Supernova research has taught scientists a lot about the universe. White dwarf mass limits provide Type 1A supernovae with the desirable characteristic of having explosions with roughly uniform energy and brightness. This brightness constant, known as the standard candle, is a useful tool for calculating distances inside the local universe. The most distant type of 1A supernovae are farther away than they should be, given what was known about the age and rate of expansion of the universe, according to measurements of their brightness that were made in 1998 by a group of astronomers from the United States, Europe, Australia, and Chile. This resulted in an entirely unexpected finding. Contrary to what we had previously believed and what models had anticipated, the universe is expanding faster than before. Astronomers developed the phrase dark energy to represent whatever is causing the expanding universe to accelerate because they were unable to explain it. This was later validated by numerous additional research. Dark refers to the lack of light, not dark matter, which should not be confused with this. Even though scientists are aware that the universe's expansion slowed until around 6 billion years after the Big Bang, the nature of dark energy is still completely unknown. The expansion then accelerated after something happened to reverse the decline. We don't know what happened. It's exceedingly mysterious. As far as we can tell, something drastically altered the nature of the entire universe. If you want to know more about Earth and our universe surrounding it, then subscribe to Explained Earth and we'll tell you all about it. Don't forget to tune in next week where we'll tell you all about the biggest star in the universe compared to us. Thank you so much for joining and we'll see you in the next video.